All right. Well, welcome to uh, the July version of Transaction Review and Calculator Practice. And we're going to move right on to uh, calculator practice. I, I like to do a few minutes at the beginning of these that's just pure calculator practice. So if you've got one, bring up your financial calculator. I use the HP10B2 from Anaday Development. I have it on my iPhone. I have it on my desktop here that you see. That's my favorite, uh, but there's others out there as well. Um, again, that's by Anaday Development. So in this case, this is a deal that uh, we're just closing uh, tomorrow. Um, and I think it's kind of fun to go over deals that are right in front of my face. Uh, the, the down payment, there, the note's 315 that I'm buying, but the, the people paid 350000 and they put a $35,000 down payment, obviously, to get the note at 315 And where they got that 35000 is the person that bought their property. They offered owner financing to that person, and then so their down payment gave them their down payment, and then each one of these uh, note holders ended up selling a partial to raise more capital, either to pay off existing financing. So it's like uh, owner financing deal with partial note sale on one, transferred to the next, and ultimately giving the guy that I'm buying from tomorrow the cash to buy another property. So here's a deal where there was no bank financing, um, just owner carry and note buyers, and we got three transactions closed. So that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So I just super love this whole thing so much. So let's just recreate this note. And of course they sort of uh, consulted with me loosely uh, in terms of if we do this on the note, what will you do, or what you know, what are you going to need to see? I kind of needed to approve the note before they they inked it because um, because they wanted me to buy it and I wanted to feel good about it. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I didn't really do a whole lot for saying yes for this note or no. Please put in that clause. Make sure there's. I think they had a 30-day grace period or something. I'm going, no, we're not going to do 30-day grace period. Anyway, so 315 is there in PV, right? That's present value or loan amount. The interest rate on the note was 5, so that's pretty good owner carry rate. That's what I'm paying on my house here is uh, they carried for us at 5% so they could get the price that they wanted. Um, it was amortized over 360, so that's a 30-year amortization so that goes in N here, which is term, and I'm for now I'm going to put zero in future value to indicate that it's, I want to see what the payment is if it's a fully amortized loan. So I want to solve for payment to get the monthly payment, which is this number here, 1690 And then it's due in five, which means in 60 months, in five years or 60 months, there's a balloon payment. So how am I going to get that in? I'm going to take 60 and I'm going to put it in here over N. Now I'm going to solve for future value, which is the balloon payment. And that's how we get that note into here. So basically, there's 60 payments on this note, and the note holder needs 155000 right now, plus the 35000 down payment that they got from the borrower to close cash on another deal they wanted to buy. So if they got 35000 down payment and they sold enough of the note, to get 155,000, they could do their deal. And I'm going, well, I want a 13% yield. So I have to figure out how much of the note I'm buying. Anyone want to take a stab at it? David, do you have your calculator up or Axel? I don't, but I'm following you. OK, so here's the note as we have it. Uh, so now I know I want this. So I'm going to just start playing around with numbers and I often redo them over and over. So I'm assuming that I'm going to buy all of these 60 payments, and I'm assuming I'm going to buy part of the balloon. So if I want a 13% yield, what? how much of the balloon will I be buying? I'll buy 60 of these, and how much at the end? Something did not work out right. How did that not happen? Oh, because. I only paid 155. This is the amount they need right here in present value. Okay, so they they need 155,000. I want 13. How much of the balloon do I need? 
Okay, it's about the same as what, right? 155 in and almost 155 out, and all these payments gives me a 13% yield. And um, so that, what we did is just say, I'll give you 155 now for the re right to receive all the 60 payments and 155,000 of the balloon. Then I'll come back and say, I wonder what that yield is. 13.09. Okay, so that's a pretty solid deal, and you can see what's my investment to value here? What's the value of the collateral? It'd be 155 divided by 315, would it not? Uh, yeah, that's the that would be the percentage of the balance of the note, but the sale price, so the value of the property is actually a little bit higher. There, the, right. sales, the sales price is 350, so you're right, Dave, it's 155 and in this case, it was uh, probably an at or below market sale. I think it probably could have sold for $25,000 more. But here's how much I'm bringing to the table. I'm not making a loan, but I'm buying an investment, making an investment divided by the sales price, which is very reasonable according to the CMA or BPO. So that's really safe, 44% ITV. That means that the property has to drop in half or more before I'm going to lose money, basically. So um, really like this. So um, there's one deal that I was just going to bring up. Like sometimes you, when you you learn how to do the deals, the the the, the note deals, um, it just allows you to see more opportunity. So I'm going to talk about a deal that I'm doing in a mobile home park here. I kind of just sort of stumbled into this one lead at a time. This park, and I, I met the, the uh, owner and the manager because they had a note that they wanted to sell. It was the, prop, the mobile home was worth 35000 There was only 15000 left on the balance of the note, and I paid them 10 for it just to get my foot in the door because I wanted to increase my investments here locally. And then they said, hey, we... We know that, uh, so I go, so this park owner has 15 empty spaces and doesn't have the liquid capital right now to fill them up. And at 515, which they're charging per spa for space rent, they're missing out on 7725 a month in, in lost space rent, in revenue. That's a lot of money. I mean, times 12, what is that, $84,000 or more? Um, now, here's the deal. I like and trust the owner and the manager of this park. Otherwise, I would not buy mobiles or notes in their park. Why is that? Anyone want to take a wild guess? If you didn't like or trust the owner or the manager, why would you? Because their space rent is a first lien position. And if they, they are going to trump your note, and if they want to starve you out and squeeze you out of your investment, they can do it. They'll just somehow never manage, manage to approve tenants or buyers for your your unit. They will make it very. They could just totally thrash your investment, your ROI. Mm -hmm. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I had a really nasty uh, mobile home note in Florida that was my seminar, basically on that. Okay, so the solution is there's a mobile, so they've got all these empty spaces. They're losing on tons of passive income for their park. And they said, we just got wind that a mobile home park closing down at Lake Tahoe, which is half hour away, that is giving away mobile homes in order to make room for a large beach club development. They need to clear the land so they can break ground on this really ritzy, I think the, the lowest price on these condos that they're selling is $1.5 and it goes up to five million. So they're getting rid of all these crappy mobile homes. It costs them thirty-five hundred to demo the unit and haul them off to landfill. So that's why it's cheaper for them to give them away than you know than to have to demo them, right? So, but the problem for me is I'm like, wow, it's expensive to move mobile homes. So even though I'm getting it for free up there at Lake Tahoe, I still have to pay, let's just call it $10,000 each to move them. So, and then let's just say I have an average cost of 5,000 to rehab them. So I'm now I'm in.